Hello everyone. In this short video we're going to take a look at using Autodesk InfoWorks 360 to delineate a drainage basin. After that we're going to use those results downstream in Civil 3D. So let's get started. So what you see on the screen is a model and this model actually came from the model builder command within Autodesk InfoWorks. So those for, that are not familiar, let me jump back to the home screen of InfoWorks. The very first button, and I apologize for the resolution, but under my models is the model builder command. This lets me put an address or a city and state for anywhere that I would like. I can drag an area of interest and type a model name and hit submit. And what I'll get is I'll get elevational data, topo, it'll be a DEM from the USGS, imagery from Bing, building and road data if available. So in just a few minutes my model will be ready and I can download it. Another option is to have, you know, if you have your own data, maybe you have your own DEM files or surface files, your own imagery, you could bring that in just as easy and create your own model in just a few minutes. Another option is if you had more of a traditional survey workflow, maybe you had a surveyed surface over in Civil 3D, I could bring that data back into InfraWorks and use this, com this functionality on that surface. And, and really the, the last option is a blend and it's very common to where I've got maybe a preliminary surface like you see here from a, the DEM standpoint and I may supplement it with some survey data from Civil 3D. But however you create it, the same approach will apply. So I'm going to go I have a bookmark in this file and you can see I have a little stream here and I want to delineate down to this point. So when I run the command I can either pick a point in the model anywhere or I can select a design road. So your roads have to be in design road format. They can't be in the GIS or the auto road or corded roads that come by default from the model builder. So once we're ready we're going to go to the drainage icon and I'm going to go to the design drainage and create watershed. So you have to have some cloud credits for this unless I'm doing, doing the single point. So notice it says create an outlet point or select a design road. Well just to show you a little extra feature or two I'm going to do the design road option. So I've got a short design road here that I converted this to a design road. And I can do a station, you know, if I had a lot of uh, outfall points along a road, I just wanted to do a range, I could make two clicks here. But if not, as you can see on the prompt, I could just hit enter. And so this will bundle the data up and send it to the cloud to run this computation. Now there are some, you saw some options over there for grid spatial and, and stream threshold. There's some information about that in the help file, you can go into a little more detail. But I just want to kind of work, uh, run it quick and just let you see some results. So it's very fast, it's, it, the cloud part is finished, it tells me how many cloud credits were deducted, and now you can see I have a drainage basin delineated to that point. And it drapes it uh, like a coverage area, if you're familiar with uh, Autodesk InfraWorks, that is uh, basically a coverage area. But it's a little smarter, it's actually a watershed, if I select it, and if I hit edit, you can see here that I've got area information, slope, and I can also go ahead and I could define some flow for this area. And I'll show you why this could be handy to you. Again, it's not required. You could just, if we just wanted the area, which I'm about to do, I'm going to take to Civil 3D. But let's say I wanted to run some rough calcs here. So with this preliminary type surface, it would probably be reasonable to use a, regre a regression equation. A lot of states, especially for state jobs, they will let you use one of their regression equations for covert, preliminary covert design. This is actually in New York, so I'll select New York. And I don't remember the region. Seems like it was three or four, but regardless, if you get the correct drainage region, which if you're in New York, you would know which region if you do this type of work. But you can see I have the 100 year flood queue down here, peak flow. And again, I could do rational method as well. So that's kind of saved in that watershed, and so you may be wondering, well, okay, so what? Well, where that could be used here is if I go, I'm going to select the design road, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say drainage, add culverts. What it's going to do is it's going to find that stream crossing, 
our crossings, and it's going to automatically size a culvert based on that queue that we just computed. There we go. So now you can see the depiction of this culvert, which it can be edited. But if I select the culvert, you get a stream profile. You can see some uh, information and attributes about the culverts. I can turn that analysis info. You can see where that watershed flow was passed to this culvert. Okay. Again, I've, get, uh, I've got inlet control, as you can see here, on that side. And I get, a, again, a profile of the, the uh, flow through that culvert. I can also directly change the geometry of the culvert size. I can add barrels. I can make it uh, rectangular instead of circular. So just on a side note, I wanted to show that since we, we uh, wanted to talk about the queue and the flow that you can compute and how it's used. So I'm, again, I'm not going to use that culvert downstream in this case, but it, you could. You could take that as well. But I'm more worried about the area. I just want this, basically this defined area over in Civil 3D. So let's do that. So I'm going to exit InfraWorks. And I'm going to go to Civil 3D. And I'm going to go, I'm in a blank drawing. I'm going to go to Insert, InfraWorks, Open Model. Here we go. I'm going to select my model, which is called Walton. So notice here this drawing doesn't have a coordinate system. So I'm going to set the coordinate system in the drawing. I could have done this before, especially if I'd had a seed file for this zone. So this was New York, East Zone, NAT 83, U.S. Foot. Looks like it. I'll double check it when I get back to the dialog here. So that matches what's in the InfraWorks model. Good. Now, if you start moving a lot of data, you'll, you'll be able to set up this basically object settings where I can kind of control before I get into this what's going to go. And I, I can also use an area of interest. I can select a small area. So let's say I was just moving a culvert or a drainage network or just one road. I don't have to select the entire model because if, when you pick the entire model, if it's really big, it takes a, long, a little bit longer for that to queue up the first time you run this. So I'm just going to do the extents. Notice here under selection set, I can refine the selection set. And this takes just a bit for this to open up. Okay, so that operation, because I selected the entire model and I did not tweak any of my object settings, in other words, I didn't turn off and say I never want roads or I never want surfaces, because I didn't turn anything off, it ran for almost uh, a minute and a half, two minutes, for this dialog to pop up, for it to scan all that data. So I just wanted you to kind of understand worst case scenario. I skipped through there, I cut that out of the video, but just kind of wanted you to understand worst case, if you don't know anything about the data, I can just pick the whole thing and, like I said, in about 90 seconds for that pretty, uh, pretty large surface model and data model will pop up. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I want to, I'm going to turn everything off with this button and I'm going to pick existing ground. I'd like to move that. Maybe want to do a little more preliminary design work in Civil 3D. So here's all the roads that came across. You can see all these streets that came across from the model builder. So I'm not worried about those. Okay, coverages. So this is going to be my drainage basin. Okay, notice I have water areas here too. Some that came over from Model Builder. And so I think we're good. So we hit OK. And now we click the Open Model button. Okay, so full disclosure, that was about a 30 second operation. I cut a little bit out just to save time. But it was about 30 seconds. And the majority of that was that existing ground surface. If you don't bring in surface data, this step is very fast. After you get your selection set done, very quick. All right, so now you can see my large existing ground preliminary surface model from DEM. And I can see what I have here is a 3D polyline created from my drainage area. And just by looking at the contours, you can see this did a fairly nice job we were delineating this by hand. I think the results are going to be close to what you would expect from this level of detail on a surface. So at this point, 
I could do whatever I needed with the surface or I could detach this existing round surface maybe add in my survey but basically now that I have a 3d polyline object let's say I wanted to add a catchment so I could create an catchment by object remember when we create a catchment group we can create it by object instead of manually so if I want to turn this into a catchment group and put flow uh, to it at that point we can do it but at this time it, it doesn't come over with any of those attributes it just knows that uh, I, I'm an area and this is my my size and you can like I said do whatever you need to downstream so I hope this was helpful have a great day